Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on conducting the Brown Forsyth test and Welsh test in SPSS. These two tests are used when the homogeneity of variance assumption is violated when conducting a one way ANOVA. So I have here a data set in the data view, and it has a group, an independent variable group. And there are three groups, control, CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, and existential therapy. And then we have a score associated with each case. So first, I'm going to conduct a one-way ANOVA. I'll go to Analyze, Compare Means, One-Way ANOVA. And then for the group variable, I'm going to put that as a factor and the score variable in the dependent list. For this test, I'm just going to go to Options and select Descriptive and Homogeneity of Variance Test. Select Continue. So you can see here from the descriptives that the control group had the highest mean, you know, 50.52 whereas CBT was at 45.89 and existential 45.93, so relatively close. The means are relatively close for the CBT and existential groups. And you can see also the sample sizes are not equal. There was 33 participants in the control group, but only 27 in the CBT group and 30 in the existential group. Another notable feature in this table is the standard deviation. You can see uh, about 5 for the control group, about 5.4 for the existential, but 8 for the CBT. So as you can see, uh, looking at the Levine's test, which is the test of homogeneity of variances, we have a significant result, which means we have to reject the null hypothesis that the variances are homogeneous. So the assumption of homogeneity of variances has been violated. So we have a statistically significant ANOVA result. It's below 0 0.05, it's 0 0.005, but we really can't use this uh, result since we violated the homogeneity of variances assumption. So let's go back to the data view. We can also run this from here, but I'm going to go back to the data view. And let's take a look at the available options here for one-way ANOVA. You can see we had selected descriptive and homogeneity of variance tests before, but now we're going to add Brown, Forsyth, and Welsh tests because they are robust to violations of homogeneity of variances. We'll select Continue. And because we have three levels of the independent variable, control, CBT, and existential, we're going to select a post hoc test. Now you can see there's two groupings here. There's two frames for post hoc tests. The first frame is equal variances assumed, and the second is equal variances not assumed. And of course here, we want to select a test from the equal variances not assumed. I'm going to select the games Howell test as I find it to be appropriate for this type of situation. So we'll click Games Howell and click Continue. And again, we're just going to run this ANOVA. And it's no surprise, of course, all this is the same because nothing has changed in the data set. We still violate the homogeneity of variances assumption. But now we have additional results in the form of the Welsh and Brown Forsyth tests, and of course the post hoc tests, in this case the games Howell. So looking up here at the uh, robust test of equality of means, you can see that the Welsh test was statistically significant, and the Brown Forsyth test was also statistically significant, both their values below 0 0.05, 0 0.002 for Welsh, and 0 0.006 for Brown 
Forsyth, which means we can move on to looking at the multiple comparisons that are displayed in the post hoc tests area. So we, we can look here and see uh, we have all the group comparisons. So looking at control over to CBT, we can see there is a statistically significant difference between those two groups. 0 0.034 is less than 0 0.05. Also between the control group and the existential treatment group, even a more significant result, 0 0.003. And of course the last comparison uh, would be the CBT treatment group to the existential treatment group. Now they're both treatment groups and you can see there's not statistically significant difference between them. 1.0 uh, not statistically significant. If we look back up at the descriptives, uh, this shouldn't be surprising. As we can see the, the control group mean are quite a bit higher than CBT and existential and the CBT and existential means are very close together, separated by just 0 0.04. So in this instance, we can see that the Welsh and the Brown Forsyth results both led us in the same direction, meaning they're both statistically significant. Now, of course, you might run into an occasion where one gives you a statistically significant result and the other does not. And there are some different thoughts on what to do at that point, how to proceed at that point. It's generally accepted that the Welsh test is more powerful, meaning it has a greater ability to detect a difference that's really there, and more conservative than the Brown Forsyth test. So if you had a significant result here for the Welsh test, but not for the Brown Forsyth test, you may consider moving forward and interpreting uh, the results of the post hoc tests. Whereas if it was the other way around and you had a non-significant Welsh test and a significant Brown Forsyth test, you may be inclined to not proceed to look at the multiple comparisons. Although it could be argued that if either one is statistically significant, that's sufficient to proceed to looking at the multiple comparisons. I think in the situations that I've described here, we have different results. Uh, if you have, if you do have one result that is statistically significant, uh, I think it's okay to take a look at the multiple comparisons, but it's important to report both statistics in the write-up uh, because clearly if one was not statistically significant, that represents a limitation in your study. I hope you found this video on conducting the Brown Forsyth test and the Welsh test to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.